So we're going to look at some problems of this together now. We know how to dif differentiate each individual term. We're now actually going to use this in the context of what a problem might look like. So I have got here the graph x cubed plus x plus y cubed plus 3y equals 6. And you can see it makes this kind of like weird curve with like a little bump in it. You don't need this graph for the question, but I wanted to show you the kinds of graphs that come up with this implicit differentiation. So I've got here x cubed plus x plus y cubed plus 3y equals 6. And what we're going to do is we want to find out what dy by dx is. In other words, I want to differentiate this entire thing with respect to x. Now, I could, if I wanted to be really long, I could do, I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x, and I'm going to differentiate this bit with respect to x. But we know with differentiation, you can just differentiate each bit separately and just write it underneath. So you don't need to do that notation. You can just dive straight in, and you can differentiate each bit one at a time. OK? So x cubed is 3x squared. x goes to 1. y cubed, 3y squared, dy by dx. 3y, 3, dy by dx. 6, 0. Okay, I'm going to get rid of those arrows because they're kind of not lined up in the right place. And I'll say, this went here, this went here, this went here, this went here, and this went here. This is the main mistake people make in this question, including myself. You just forget that when you're differentiating a constant, you've been doing so many bits beforehand, just make sure it goes to zero, okay? So all it wants us to do is find dy by dx, luckily, in terms of x and y. So... What should I do on the left-hand side? Factorize. So I'm going to take out a factor of dy by dx. Or maybe if you want, I can put everything on the other side first. So I've got 3y squared dy dx plus 3 dy dx equals minus 3x squared minus 1. Just subtracted the minus the 3x squared and the 1 to that side. Then I'll factorize so that dy by dx is 3y squared plus 3. And then I get that dy by dx is minus 3x squared minus 1 over 3y squared plus 3. And so for this kind of question, what you'll notice is your function for the gradient is now expressed in terms of x and y which means you need to know both parts of its coordinate to be able to find the gradients. Usually when we have a dy by dx function, it's just in terms of x. This time it's going to be in terms of x and in terms of y, which means if you wanted to find the gradient of the particular point, you need to know the x coordinate and the y coordinate when you do the substitution stage. So I'll do the next one now as well. This time it says find dy by dx in terms of x and y, where e to the 2x plus e to the 2y equals xy. Not a majorly interesting graph, but I thought I'd include a picture of it for you anyway. So we just start off by writing out our function. And we're just going to differentiate each bit as we go. So what does e to the 2x differentiate to with respect to x? 2e to the 2x. e to the 2y. Good. Just make sure any time you're doing it with y, you get the dy by dx. What do we need to do for x, y? What do we need to be careful with? Product, Product rule, OK? So somewhere on your page, or you can do it in your head, I'm going to say u is x, v is y, u dash is 1, v dash is dy by dx. Make sure you don't say 1 there. It's got to be dy by dx. So when we do the product rule, we get x dy dx plus y. And then you have a choice here. Your choice is, do you put the dy by dx's on the left-hand side, or do you put them on the right-hand side? It won't make a difference. Your answer will just look like everything, is, everything that was positive is negative, and everything that's negative is positive, depending on which way you go. So I'm going to put it onto the left-hand side. So that's 2e to the 2y dy dx minus x dy dx equals y minus 2e to the 2x. 
So factorizing. And then dividing. So I put all of my dy by dx's on the left. If you've finished writing it down, think about what this would look like if I put everything onto the right hand side. The other way around. So you would have had 2e to the 2x minus y over x minus 2e to the 2y. Are these things the same as each other? Yep, yeah, because it's the same as multiplying the top and bottom by minus 1, so they are actually the same as each other. So if you ever get to a stage where they're like, oh, they asked me to make it look like this thing, and I couldn't make it look like that thing, it's possible that it is the same and you just, everything is negated and flipped, okay? So either of those answers would be acceptable because they are equivalent to each other. They just have been multiplied top and bottom by minus one. Obviously, that's equivalent fractions there. No, 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 I was just looking at what was next. Everyone got that one written down? Yep, okay, so this time we want to find the value of dy by dx, and I've got a, an important tip for this one, so please make sure that you, you do listen when I give you that tip. So this time we have got, we want to find dy by dx at 1, 1, and our equation is e to the 2x ln y equals x plus y minus 2. Here's the graph, rather strange looking. That's what we're actually dealing with in this question. So this first bit we've got here requires the product rule. This one I probably would recommend writing down u and v. So u is e to the 2x, v is ln y, u dash will go to 2e to the 2x, and v dash will go to 1 over y, dy dx. Don't forget the dy dx. So the product rule is going to give us this setup, which is going to be e to the 2x over y dy by dx plus 2e to the 2x ln y. And then we're going to just differentiate these things over here. x will go to 1. y will go to dy by dx. 2, nothing. So we'll then just leave it at this stage here. Now, you could, if you wanted to, rearrange this to find out what dy by dx is equal to, and then substitute in x equals 1 and y equals 1 because of this thing. But my tip is that it is much better to substitute in sooner rather than later because there's no need to make dy by dx the subject. The question didn't say, can you tell me what dy by dx is equal to in general and then substitute in. It just says, tell me what dy by dx is equal to when x is 1 and y is 1. So my tip when you have this is to substitute in straight away x is 1 and y is 1. So we would have here e to the 2, e squared over 1. So that's just going to be e squared dy by dx. No calculators needed. Then we're going to have 2e squared multiplied by ln 1. ln 1 is? Zero. zero. ln 1 is 0, yeah? Because anything, the power of anything that gives you 1 is 0. So this whole thing is zero, so I'm not even going to bother writing it down, okay? Even though I've written plus there, let's not write plus. So that whole thing is zero, and it's equal to one plus dy by dx. Do you see how that's just going to be so much easier to find out what dy by dx is rather than having to do the rearranging and then the substituting? Because this whole thing disappeared because ln of one is zero. So I'm now going to put it onto this side. So that's e squared dy by dx minus dy by dx equals 1. And then I'll factorize. So that's e squared minus 1 over equals 1. And so dy by dx is 1 over e squared minus 1, like this. That's what it means when it says exact values. I didn't pick up a calculator for that whole question, OK? You should never be typing in 
e squared and then making that become a number. It wants that to be one of the exact values that we're talking about. So I've just done a little reminder in the corner. You'll notice, as I just talked about, that the gradient functions here can be a mixture of x and y. They won't just be one of them, OK? So you're going to have a go at this question for me now. I'm going to do it slowly on the board, and then I can put the answers up. And then we're going to try some questions from exercise 9H. And that's the first half of implicit differentiation, because there's also some bits uh, that just get a little bit, little bit more challenging, OK? Careful, it doesn't actually ask you to differentiate for part A of the question. I just started going to differentiate. It's asking you to find the coordinates of the points where x equals minus 8. So you're just going to stub that in. 